Hi everyone, and welcome back to The Independent Dollar, and another episode in our subscriber series, where we answer all of your questions about personal finance and money. If you have a question you'd like featured in an upcoming video, comment below or you can send us an email to info at theindependentdollar.com. In today's video, our subscriber asks, what should I do if I've maxed out my TFSA? Is it better to start investing in an RSP account or should I be investing in a non-registered account? So in today's video, we're going to run through some scenarios to see the pros and cons of using an RSP versus a non-registered account once you've maxed out your TFSA. Will your investments grow faster or slower using an RSP? Will you pay more taxes using a non-registered account? Are there any downsides to using these accounts when you run out of room in your TFSA? Before we jump into today's video, we just want to make a quick disclaimer that this video is intended to be both educational and entertaining but should not be considered financial advice. It is always recommended that you speak with both a financial planner and an accountant to run through some scenarios based on your detailed personal financial information. Here's what we know about our subscriber so far. He or she makes about $75,000 a year, their TFSA is maxed out, and they have a balance of about 10,000 in an RRSP account. They've also told us their expenses are about $900 a month all in. Their goal is to reach $1.5 million in investments in order to retire. We don't know our subscriber's age, so we're going to assume that they're in their mid-20s. At $900 a month, their cost of living is very low compared to the average Canadian. In 2018, Statistics Canada found that individuals living in Canada between the age of 25 and 34 earned on average about $45,700 and spent about $38,000 in expenses each year. So for this subscriber, they're in a situation where their income is significantly higher than the average Canadian in their age group, and their expenses are also substantially lower, which means they should be able to hit their goal of reaching retirement at an early age if they're able to maximize their savings. At a salary of $75,000 a year, our subscriber's annual RSP limit would be a little over $13,000. We want them to reach their goal as fast as possible though, so after they've maxed out their RSP and tax-free savings account, any money left will go towards investing in a non-registered account, and the same will be true if they choose not to use an RSP. So what do you do when you've maxed out your TFSA but you want to continue investing? How do you decide whether to invest more in an RSP or to invest in a non-registered account instead? That will depend on a few things, but with RSPs, one of the best indications of whether or not you should be using that account will depend on what your income will be in retirement. If your income would be higher when you retire, then RSPs may not be the best choice for you. You may end up paying more in income tax and also getting income-tested benefits clawed back, like old age security, for example. If your income will be substantially less, then RSPs might be the right fit. So let's head back to our subscriber. They're in their mid-20s and they're going to save the most amount of money they can every year until they hit $1.5 million. They'll invest primarily in stock earning an average rate of return of between 6 and 7%. As well, their income and expenses will rise every single year to take into account inflation. Now inflation is a general rise in prices each year that causes us to have to pay more money for things that we currently buy now. As an example, when Tim Hortons first opened their doors back in the 1960s, a cup of coffee would have only cost you 10 cents. Fast forward to 2020 and a medium coffee will now cost you closer to $1.80. So what if our subscriber decides to max out their RSP? By maxing out their RSP and their TFSA every year, then using the non-registered account for whatever they have left, they'll hit their goal of $1.5 million by the age of about 42. Assuming their expenses don't change much, it's unlikely that they will ever run out of money. What if they decided instead they didn't want to use an RSP and they only wanted to invest in a TFSA in a non-registered account? Then what? Well, in this case, by maxing out the TFSA every year and then investing the rest into a non-registered account, our subscriber hits their 1.5 million goal a little later at age 44. Why two years later though? Well, there's two reasons for this. First of all, by using an RSP, it meant they could invest money that would have otherwise been spent on income tax. By doing that, their investments grew faster. Secondly, by using an RSP, it also meant that they were investing less money into their non-registered account, which meant their non-registered accounts were smaller. With the investment account being smaller, it earned less taxable income every year while they were working, which meant they spent less money on income tax and had more money left over at the end of the year to invest. This helped them hit their goal of reaching $1.5 faster. 
What about taxes though? If you watched our previous RSP videos, you would know that when you die, unless your RSP is being transferred to someone like a spouse, the entire account is sold and added to your income. That means if you die with an RSP worth say 600,000, your income in the year you die will be 600K. You will be taxed at the highest tax bracket possible and lose a substantial amount of your estate to Canada Revenue Agency. We tend to focus a lot of our strategy on today and leading up to retirement. However, it shouldn't end there. You need to develop an efficient withdrawal strategy for your investments as part of your plan. Since this subscriber is retiring at such an early age, before they would normally be eligible for things like OAS and CPP, their only source of income before the age of 60 will be their investments. Because of that, I was able to develop a withdrawal strategy that meant by the time they die, in both cases, any money in their RSP would have been completely spent. Now, it did mean that during some years, they might have withdrew more than they needed from their RSP, but anything left was reinvested into either their TFSA or the non-registered account. In fact, by using RSPs, it meant that by the time they died, their estate, after tax, was actually worth a lot more. Something to keep in mind, though, is that things can change over time. TFSA limits may rise or fall. Same with RSP limits and the tax brackets at which we're taxed. They can expand or contract over time to allow for larger amounts of income to either be taxed less or taxed more. On top of that, your income and expenses will change over time. For that reason, it's important to review your strategy annually and adjust to changes in your environment. Hopefully you found this video helpful and encouraging to start saving towards your goals. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.